In this video, we're going to cover the chaining feature of Management Pack Builder. Many APIs require making dynamic requests that include information like IDs uh, in them in order to get the data that you're looking for. In this case, that's what we're going to use chaining for. So today we're going to add a request like that and um, to show the request that we want to make, I'm going to type it here in the API path, and then we'll show how chaining works. So I want to create this snapshot request that uses the um, base path of VMware VM, and then it's going to use a, a dynamic VM ID found on whatever VMs are available in this rubric system. And then it needs to attach snapshot to the end. So I need to have uh, a dynamic number of VM ID requests run based on what VMs are present in the system that's being monitored. And in order to do this, we're going to use chaining. And with chaining, uh, you could think of one request is going to be the parent and one request is going to be the child. So the parent request will be run first. And then based on the response and information found in there, uh, the management pack builder or the management pack will run additional requests based on that response. You can chain multiple times and have, you know, uh, three, four, five requests all chained in a row, or you could split them off at different points. It's fairly flexible um, in how that works. So again, you can kind of follow the prompt here. In this case, we need to use variables from another API request. We need to get that VM ID. So here we're going to choose the request, and we need to use the VM or VM request, which is going to have our VM ID in it. And then we need to choose a response list. And there's some information about what each of these kind of mean, but essentially you're going to choose the list that has the attributes, uh, or at least the single attribute. If you do have only one you need to use um, that uh, is available in that list. Once you've chosen what you're chaining off of, you need to choose at least one field that you're going to include as a as a parameter to use in this this um, chained request. We need to, in this case, use the ID, and we can see all of the attributes are available from this list right here, and we can see that there's an ID which is going to be our VM ID. This is exactly what we want, so we can select this. And we could just hit save, but uh, there is this label that we're going to use to reference this field dynamically. And we want to set this to something that is going to be uh, globally within the design um, intuitive to understand. It's going to provide some context. ID is a little bit too simple, so we're going to provide the context. In this case, I'm going to provide VM ID so that I can remember um, which ID this kind of belongs to. So I've added this request, and this is the bare minimum needed in order to move on to the next step. But if you wanted to add additional parameters, or if you needed to add additional parameters because they were uh, multiple parts in the URL or something like that, you can add those parameters. Before we move on, we want to take note of how are we going to use this parameter in our URL. And we can take it from this copy field here. Uh, this is going to be the usage of the value itself. OK, so now looking at this URL we're trying to create that's going to be dynamic. Uh, what we need to have is the dynamic VM ID right here. So what we can do is replace this with the usage field that we copied before. So we can see VMware VM, request parameters, VM ID, and then snapshot. So this will be made for each VM ID we found in that parent request and, um, and should be exactly what we're looking for. So last thing we're going to do here is just change this request name to snapshot so that it's easier to see what and reference what this is in other contexts of the design. All right, so let's run our request and see that the replacement worked the way we expected. So we do have a successful request, and we can see that the field was replaced the way we wanted. Um, so this means that when we go to run the request, it will run for uh, every VM that we found, and that's uh, that's a good sign. Now, 
If we go back to the body, we can see that this particular VM didn't have any snapshots. Um, this might not be a problem, uh, but in some cases, like what we're going to use the snapshot information for, we want to actually know what the snapshot objects look like. So we're going to change uh, what value we're using for our test request, as that's going to result in our result here and and inform the other parts of MP Builder what they can um, parse out of this response normally. So I'm going to save this for now, and I'm going to come over to my VM request. And I'm actually going to uh, just take this VM ID. In your particular case, when you're um, doing this, um, it's worthwhile to understand this because you may have a different request that you're trying to uh, dynamically make, and the base value doesn't have the information you're looking for. Um, in which case you need to come in and know how to set your uh, sample request. So here, when we go back and look at our chaining parameters, we can see that this is the sample value that's going to be used when we do our test request. And this is really just uh, used when Management Pack Builder is testing the request. Um, it will be replaced dynamically later. So we can set this to what we, this other VM ID that we pulled out and uh, that we know has some snapshots, and we can run this request. Okay, so now with the updated VM ID, we get back snapshots, and we have all the sample data that we need in order to continue on through our design. So we're going to save this. Additionally, when using chaining, uh, you can chain multiple requests off of each other, and in this way, you can continue this dynamic path. Uh, to deeper and deeper areas of your API. In order to do this, you'll add a request like normal and enable chaining. When you choose the request, you'll choose the previously chained request. So if I want to include the information from the VM and the snapshot, I can choose the snapshot request. And then I'll still choose which part of that attribute I want or response I want to chain from. And then now in this context, I'll have the VM ID that was used to request the snapshot information. In addition to, I can add the snapshot ID uh, from the snapshot request in order to make a, a even deeper request. So I can go VMware VM and I can do VM ID and then the snapshot with the snapshot ID and I could add on some other dynamic information or some other static information to get like details or something like that. In this case, this API path doesn't exist. There isn't additional details to get underneath the snapshot, but just be aware that you can uh, take advantage of this uh, kind of path. And with that, um, that is the kind of basic coverage of how chaining works. Uh, there's a lot of ways to take advantage of this, and it's fairly flexible in both being able to add multiple parameters uh, from a single request as well as that nesting that we just showed.